Right, CNN political analyst and senior political correspondent at the New York Times, Maggie Haberman, is at the table. Also, CNN political commentator David Urban. He's a former Trump campaign advisor. And Van Jones, a former special advisor to President Obama. Good morning. I know no one got much sleep. <laughs> uh, thanks for getting up. We didn't put you in the 6 a.m. hour, so that means we, we, we love you. We appreciate it. Very, very kind. Um, <laughs> it's true. It's tr it is true. You know Actually, that. Yes. You oh, know I, that. Oh, I know. I, I know from years. You yes. know that. I get it. Um, uh, you, Maggie, you and Caitlin are, I think, are the journalists that know President Trump like the back of your hand more than anyone else. What did last night tell you about the year and a half ahead for the country? Uh, it's going to be ugly if Trump is the nominee, and I think that we could have anticipated that. I think that uh, I think two things can be true at once. I think that uh, Caitlin uh, elicited a lot of news from him. I think that he made a, a bunch of statements that certainly his party and members of his party are not uh, elected officials in his party are not going to want to have to comment on. You know, his joking about the sexual assault, sexual abuse uh, liable verdict in the the civil case against him a day earlier. Uh, his abortion comment actually probably is is not you know, it, that's not the one that I think Republicans are going to be upset about him you know doubling down again on supporting the January 6th rioters so there were a lot of saying that he he refusing to say who should win the war in Ukraine that was really really striking I think all of that was interesting and I, in terms of just the political context and in terms of the legal cases he walked himself and Caitlin was right there with him because she knows these cases really well he walked himself into some trouble with the special counsel investigation into why he had all these documents at Mar-a-Lago. I thought that was really, really important. I also think two things can be true at once, and it's true that his team was really happy. They were happy with the reaction. They were happy with the crowd. They liked how aggressive he was. Now, you know, the Biden people also liked how aggressive he was because they think it helps them in a general election. There's a lot of time to go between now and then, Poppy, but all it tells you is Donald Trump has one speed, and this is the same Donald Trump that we have seen for seven or eight years. All I kept thinking last night was that famous, like, Dennis Green football coach press conference where he kept saying they are who we thought they were. They are, he, are, he is who we, th he, who we thought he is. Right. It's never going to change. But you made a really important point here. If you take a step back, if you're talking to Democrats, whatever their views on social media, th there was a lot of Democrats saying, this is gold totally. for us, right? You know, there's a text from a Biden advisor, you know, weeks, uh, weeks worth of damning content, uh, it was quite an efficient hour. Can you be, can it, can both be true? Where the former president's advisors are thrilled, Republican primary voters are thrilled, and if you're a Democrat, you're watching that and saying we've got 50 attack ads based on one hour. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if uh, if you're a Democrat watching that, you you think we've been criticizing and complaining about Biden. This is a horror show that we don't want a rerun of, and I think a lot of uh, Democrats were appalled. By his behavior, him throwing Ukraine under the bus. Uh, you know, I hope he gets sued again t uh, this morning for, for libel and, and, and slander and everything else. He's being so horrible, uh, you know, toward uh, the, the, the people who have been um, uh, on the other side of his legal cases. But, you know, I think that we've got to be careful here now because uh, Trump has a particular trick that he uses with nostalgia. Uh, the whole make America great again is about. There was this era that was wonderful, it was the 1950s, and I'm going to bring you back there. He's now using nostalgia about the Trump administration. Just a few years ago, everything was perfect. So he's trying to own both the, a nostalgic past and a future he can bring you to, which leaves Biden potentially stuck with the president and no place to go. And so if you're a Democrat, don't just get thrown off by the emotions here. He's got a rhetorical strategy. We've got to figure out a way to take that narrative away from him. The Trump years were not perfect. They, by far, they were not perfect, even before COVID. So you begin to see how you're going to have to fight this guy in the general. So I think this guy is almost unstoppable for the nomination. Do you believe, David, as a former advisor to the president, President Trump, that this was gold? For Democrats, for President Biden, and in general, let's just yeah, get so, to the general. Yeah, so point. so I, I, I would say it depends on you know wh where you're coming from. I think that the Trump, um, somebody Abby said it last night. This Trump being Trump, that's where you saw. It's Phil, you alluded to the same thing. Um, I think it was a missed opportunity for the president in terms of you know what, what Van is saying is correct. You know, Biden says this correctly all the time. Don't judge me against the Almighty. Judge me against the alternative. And, and to Van's point. Um, voters are going to look at Trump, and they're going to look at the alternative, Biden. You look at the numbers right now, and the, the current president's numbers suck. They're terrible. And so what explains Trump's strength? It's Biden's weakness, right? And so I think voters are going to make, they're going to make that comparison. And I think last night was a missed opportunity for the president, for the former president, to say, look, we're, we're, Caitlin, we're never going to agree on January 20th. 
I mean, on the 2020 election, we're not going to agree on January 6th, but let's talk about some things we might agree on. We need a stronger border. We need to stop fentanyl. I mean, everyone today in America is watching the border crisis happen in real time, and they're thinking, we need to fix this. This isn't working correctly, right? And so Trump really missed an opportunity to really address those types of things. Inflation. Listen, Silicon Valley Bank, uh, Bank First Republic, all these things cratered because of the inflationary policies and of bad, this administration. And, and, no, and no, I get it. But, they, but, but yeah. he could have framed those issues, right? And, well, and, well, and he, he never and, missed, but he missed it. never misses an opportunity to miss an opportunity to talk about somebody who's not Trump. And that's right. No, but that was what it was. Yeah. He did not, he talked, he, he was so interested in defending himself and talking about right, himself but he, he, could have he didn't talk about Biden He just could have put a pin in it, quick pivot, and it would have been... No, but that would be him world, being a different person right. than and he is, no too. no world is that so. ever going to happen. Which I think well, wait, this is, this is my hopeful world. Right, right. right. but that's this the hopeful world hopeful that Republicans right. have been living right. in for right. the last seven right. years. Right. And now, once again, they're after a day where he's yeah. on center stage and they're all running away from cameras and reporters who want to ask yeah. them right. about what the yes. former yes. president... This is the second day in a row after the jury verdict. Exactly, but I think my question to Maggie is... What what is the end game here for him relitigating all of this stuff? Besides the fact that it just is who he is. I and mean, I think that that is the end game. I mean, I think it's two things. Advisors, you know, know that when he they try to prep him or try to control him or manage him, he tends to go even more in the opposite direction. So like there's a, pardoning the people from January. Right. So there's a, they, I mean, some of his advisors were actually really happy with his January 6th answers. Um, I couldn't quite get a clear Why? sense as to, right, that would be the question. Uh, on the, the pardoning issue in particular, it was because he didn't commit to, yes, they're all pardoned. It was likely... Can we play that real to, quick? Yeah. Kaylin had a good back and forth. Can we play yeah. that song? Uh, equivocal on pardoning traitors. <laughs> Will you pardon the January 6th rioters who were convicted of federal offenses? Uh, I am inclined to uh, pardon many of them. I can't say for every single one, because a couple of them, probably, they got out of control. They, they, they thought that was cool, because he caveated it, it was, with the yes, word it was, it, was, it was better than the alternative, which is how this always tends to get looked at. I think to, to the point that you were making before, though, again, this was a forum where Caitlin got a lot of news made, a lot. Yes. A lot of things that we have not heard him talk about, a lot of issues that he has not been pushed because when people are traveling aboard his plane or he's going to a rally, it's something very different. And so how it all plays for his team and they're feeling good that they're getting cheers is very different than what it might yeah, play I think out. Really, I think it's important. Uh, Caitlin was like a matador against the biggest bull yeah. in American history. And I think she, she put a lot of knives in that are going to pay off later on in terms of getting him to say stuff that actually had not actually said on the record before. I think that's very important. Yeah, yeah but, but to Maggie's point, you know, Republicans got what they needed out of this. Trump got what he needed out of this. He's tough, pugilistic. People like the base likes to see that. He's in there mixing it up with the media again. Not a friendly environment, right, for, for Donald Trump to come back to CNN. You know, I, I kind of joke that you, you would never see Joe Biden wading into a Fox News uh, a debate. I don't like think that's... Uh, Fair comparison. No, no, I, I, CNN is not. I, I, yeah, yeah. I just, my so, point well, is, let's not an, make un, it. an unfriendly, so an unfriendly. Well, that was a friendly I audience. I also don't think, that, that audience. Yeah. I think yeah. you can't get a more objective journalist and interviewer than Caitlin. No, 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 no. I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I, I, I completely agree. I'm not, I'm, I'm, Caitlin did a great job. I'm just saying that Biden is not going to, He's not going to stand up and do that. I, I, I would love to see him take questions. But with who? From an Sean audience. Hannity? I mean, like, I. No, I, but I'm it, saying, like, I'd love to see him take questions from an audience like that, unscripted, no notes. It's, it's tougher to do. We'll, we'll see if he does it. And, and I think the audience, by the way, whoever just said that, they asked some pretty softball questions. There were no really pressing hard questions that, that they asked. Final thought, Van? Well, I, I think that we can look at this from a political point of view, and, and we should. But from a, a, the point of view of the United States, of, of, of a country, uh, the idea that you've got somebody who just basically put you on notice, you vote for me, I am going to help Putin. To me, that's my, my, the bigger takeaway is all the other stuff. What really matters right now on the world stage is what's going on right now in Ukraine. The fact that he wouldn't say, I want Ukraine to win. Mm -hmm. I don't want dictators to win. I want to make sure Zelensky is triumphant here. The fact that he was equivocal and he both yeah. sided a brutal dictator killing civilians and stealing children with, like, about... we should not let that go 
unremarkable. Think about what Kevin McCarthy said a few weeks ago in Israel talking, yep. making that so clear, yep. Maggie. No, I think that's exactly right. I mean, listen, I, I think that there, there was a lot of insight that we got into where Trump is because we don't hear from him the way he used to. He's not on Twitter. Yeah. People don't read Truth Social the way, I'm so, no matter what he says, they just don't. <laughs> and so um, the, the way what they did when he was on Twitter, he does not do a ton of mainstream interviews. And that's for a reason. There's, there's also been fewer opportunities for him. He is the front runner for the Republican nomination by a very wide mile. So I don't see how you don't try to talk to him. I do think Dave is, is right that the comparison of you're going to hear Republicans say Trump went into, you know, an environment that Trump at least has argued isn't, isn't you know, favorable to him uh, and that he went back and forth. And I think that you are going to see them make that kind of comparison against Biden over and over. And that is going to basically be the frame they want this election to be, which is weak versus strong. I'm not saying that's the case, mm -hmm. but that's what they're going to push.